Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are gonna be working on setting up our damage flash. Because right now, if I get my play up and I go to chase after my enemy and they begin attacking, it's hard to tell if they're attacking or not. So a good way of setting this up is by making our sprite flash a certain color. So for example, if I go over to the enemy unit here, I select their sprite property, uh, or their sprite uh, node I mean, and go into the inspector, go down to where we have visibility, and then we have the modulate uh, property here. If we can modify that, and if I modify it, you can see that it changes the color of the sprite, okay? And if we can make that a really bright red, as you can see, it damages them like so. Um, so I'm just gonna switch this back to white for now. So pretty much what we're gonna do is whenever our unit takes damage, it is going to change its color for just a fraction of a second and then return back to its normal color right here. So let's go over to our script, go over to our unit script and down to the take damage function. Now in take damage here, pretty much, let's go to a new line and we are going to go sprite dot modulate equals color dot red. Okay, and you can see there are a bunch of different colors here that we can choose from, so color dot red. Then what we want to do is switch it back, so sprite.modulate equals color.white. Now, this doesn't mean that it is going to make it the sprite white. Instead, this basically just means it's going to return it back to its normal color because the way the modulate property works is that it multiplies these color values by whatever the sprite currently has. And if you multiply everything by one, well, that just returns it to its normal state. Now, we don't want to leave it like this because in the same frame, it's going to set it to red, then set it to white. So we're not going to notice any difference. So what we need to do is we need a way of basically pausing the function for a fraction of a second before switching the sprite back to white. So how do we do that? Well, we can do that with timers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go await get tree dot create timer. We can then give it a time of 0.1 seconds dot time out. So pretty much what we're doing here is we are first of all using the keyword await. And await basically means that once it reaches this line of code, it is going to pause the function until whatever comes after here has been completed, okay? You can think of it like an operation, okay? So once this line of code here has done what it has to do, then it will continue on with the rest of the code. In our case, we are accessing the tree, so we're accessing basically um, the node tree. We are then creating a new timer node and assigning it a timer of 0.1 seconds. And then dot timeout basically begins the timer. And once that timer is complete, then we move on to the next line of code, which is returning it to white. So what we should see now is that when our player unit deals damage to the enemy, they flash red for 0.1 seconds, then return to white. So let's save this. Let's press play and see if it works. So I'll select our player, I'll right click on the enemy to target them, and we should see them flashing red. And as you can see, there we go. And then after their health reaches zero, they of course get destroyed. So yeah, that is how we can set up our damage flash here inside of Godot, by changing the sprite modulate property, which is basically uh, their color multiplier. Now in the next lesson, we are going to make it so that our enemy units can start to attack us back. So when the player gets within range, they are then going to begin attacking, okay? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then.